Since the last devlog of my racing game Apex Rush, I've made some massive changes that have completely taken the game to the next level. I've also taken your feedback from the comments and the Discord server and added a bunch of new features, so let's hop straight into this new devlog. Also make sure you wishlist Apex Rush on Steam if it looks like a game you'd like to try. Thank you very much. I'm not sure where to begin today because I've added so many features since last time, uh, but I guess we can begin with the car upgrades. I've added a drift version of the Nexo and I spent a lot of time on the handling for this one. And to be honest, it's even smoother to drift uh, than the other drift car, the SX-7. It's got less weight and a different center of mass setting, which I've tweaked so that the drift cars will behave pretty similar, but there's still some differences with handling and speed, of course. Suspension settings have also been improved across all cars and changing these settings specifically on the drift cars gave some really nice results. Now, I am still working on adding suspension height customization. It's pretty tricky updating the physics at runtime for those. But yes, it's definitely something that I'm looking into. Another way of completely changing how the game looks is with camera settings. So I threw together a camera settings quick menu that pauses the game and allows you to change the FOV, height, distance and the tilt of the chase cam. And it's really nice to be able to access this while driving and seeing the changes live rather than hitting pause, finding the settings in a menu and then going back and forth. And it's really fun to mess with these settings, especially like the FOV just going full quake mode. So I'm excited to see which perspective you guys will prefer for drifting and racing. I also take more feedback and I Ideas from the Apex Rush Discord server, which I'll leave a link to in the description. So yeah, go and join that, and we can talk more about the game in there as well. We're also gonna tweak the Drift Nexus engine a bit, so it's gonna sound a bit more aggressive, and also adding a new exhaust pop to match with the new exhaust flames. Wheel customization has been suggested many times and it's finally been added as well. There's now a set of 10 rims for each car to unlock, modeled by 7HC who is doing all the car modeling. Now for this to work I had to completely re-rig every single car in Blender because I also wanted to add these new brake discs and brake calipers to the rig as well. So previously the wheels looked like this, you know, kind of a boring brake disc. And here it is now with the animated calipers, the new rims, as well as the new tire textures. So yeah, the wheels have been given a massive glow up since last time. This week, me and 7HC also started working on adding liveries, because there won't be a custom livery editor just yet, but you will be able to unlock some good looking liveries through challenges and leveling up your car. You can also see that I've made a new customized level where you have the cars all lined up, sort of like a showroom, kinda, and you just toggle between them and you can begin customizing them straight away. I also modified this camera to have some nice depth of field so it blurs out the background, sort of focusing more on the parts that you're working on. There's still some stuff to be changed within this whole system and the UI. I've also just fine-tuned like a lot of the stability and handling settings for the cars. For example, making crashing more forgiving when you're just bumping into edge while drifting. Previously, the car could like spin out from the smallest impact. Also lowering the amount of bump you get when crashing with the race car, for example. And also removing this ugly camera stutter and shake that kept happening whenever I landed upside down. Now it just smoothly stops moving and resets the chase cam steadily. Now an absolute necessity for me when I play racing games is a photo mode. One, because I just really enjoy taking photos, and two, it's really good for creating thumbnails for videos. So I've implemented a photo mode as well. Using an asset that I found, I've been modifying it a bit to fit better with Apex Rush, but this is honestly so much fun to mess around with. Now you can get up real close to the car models, toggling the depth of field and look at how detailed these models are, even though they have this low poly and flat shaded design. So at any point when you play, you just toggle it, enter photo mode instantly, snap a picture, save it, and then you can just toggle out and continue driving as normal. As you may have noticed throughout this video, the game also looks completely different from last time. I've been going through a bunch of iterations of the style that I want for this game and I think I've finally landed on using this stylized environment that just looks better and matches the cars. Here's a before and after on the Drift Island, which if you look at the textures, uh, they kind of don't blend together as well as the new ones with the cars. And this is something that have been brought up in the comments and on the Discord as well, that the textures kind of clash. So I went for this new art style, and if you go all the way back to my first ever version of Apex Rush, this is kind of the style that I was going for in that video. And obviously since then I've just been experimenting with different art styles, seeing what I like, but I think I've finally settled on this one for now. Or not for now, we have to settle for this one. This will now be the style of the game. So the Drift Island was the first map that I redesigned, added new assets to, and then we moved to the floating island level. And let me show you some quick shots of the old version. 
and then here with the new assets. I mean, I can't even believe how big of an upgrade this whole style gave to these maps. I also reworked the clouds, made them more fluffy and better looking. Especially at nighttime, they had this ugly noise around them. But that's all been fixed now, so I'm very excited to begin importing tracks into this map and have the cars jumping over the floating rocks, maybe through some waterfalls as well, we'll see. But yeah, began working on these new variations right here, and then of course scattered them all out, placed them where they should be. And yeah, it's gonna look really, really good, I think. I also move these clouds into the track builder, so when you're making tracks, it also looks 10 times better right now. There's still going to be different scenery options to pick from when building maps, uh, so you'll see some more variations of that probably next time. And Simon, who's helping developing the track builder, he's been killing it with these new features that we managed to add. So most requested one for the track builder has been a no grid or free place mode, which we've now added so you can just switch between building off grid or on grid at any point when creating maps. And this will unlock so much potential for just better maps and more unique jumps. Since you can now also just select a placed object and then use this gizmo to tweak the position, rotation, scale a bit as well. So if I place like this tilted start even, let's say I want to just run off here and then land on a platform. You may be thinking, well, where am I gonna place this platform accurately so I can land on it? Well, if I don't place it first and then I give it a go, we now added an attempt trail that draws the trajectory of the car so you can map out the jumps and distances a lot easier. This is something that I've seen used in Trackmania using plugins, so I just knew that I had to have this feature in Apex Rush because it's gonna help so much when building tracks and yeah, just figuring out distances when jumping and stuff. And yeah, you can just toggle these away or just completely delete them when you're satisfied and then yeah, just keep on building. So we're getting close to a final version of the track builder. Like I mentioned before, it will allow you to share tracks via the Steam Workshop, but you can also drag files locally, just like download the map, drag it into your folder so you don't have to go through the Steam Workshop for all the maps. You've also asked for me to add a parking garage in the city so you can drift and do some stunt in it. So I modeled this entire parking garage in the city map, which is my next focus to finish. It has five floors and I also added this clean section to climb while drifting on the outside to sort of go up the floors obviously. And this is probably the biggest model that I've made yet. And I just need to tweak some of the textures to fit in with the new art style that I'm going for. And if you've been following my channel for a while, especially my GTA 5 videos, you know that my favorite type of stunt to do is a parking garage entry. Where you hit a jump and you land inside of a parking garage. So I had to make sure that this is possible in my game too. And not only that, but also adding like jumps on the top of buildings or garages so you can drift off of them and continue to drift. Yeah, it's gonna be a bunch of challenges and easter eggs to find on this map, so I'm very excited for you guys to try this one too. Alright, I think I went through everything. There's been so much since the last video. I've been working so hard together with the team to try and get this game ready for the end of summer. So if you're interested in playing the game when it comes out, please do give it a wishlist on Steam. It also helps me out a lot. And yeah, I appreciate all of the support you guys have shown so far. It's been amazing. And we're getting closer to the final stretch. We have private beta testing on Steam just around the corner to get some more feedback for the game. But that's gonna be it for today's Apex Rush devlog. I hope you guys are excited to play it. And yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.